Welcome back to Sailing with the Jameses. Our first week on Anchor on Shining Light has been fun and eventful. We fitted child netting to Shining Light, and the saga of the dying outboard has continued. So this is uh, day number two of being boat bound. We uh, <laughs> haven't been able to get the outboard started, so I've tried several different things. Um, <laughs> the first one was just brute force, trying to pull it for a very long time, getting it going. Uh, then I've checked the plugs. Uh, they're new plugs on it and they are working fine. Um, so then I went through and was trying different start methods. I thought maybe I'd flooded it and left it for a little while. That didn't seem to work. Um, so then I went and got my little friend here contact cleaner and I sprayed that straight into the carby and it started firing straight away but uh, wouldn't um, start up. So then this is the carburetor here. At the bottom that goes onto the engine this side and this is on the front here. And at the bottom here is a drain and that'll drain the fuel bowl. Uh, I couldn't actually do it when it was on the engine itself. I uh, don't have the right shifters or anything to get in there. Uh, at this stage we, we uh, only have little ones like this. We don't actually have proper ring spanners or anything yet. Um, so I took it off and when I did it, there was no fuel in the fuel bowl at all. So, which leads me to leave there's something wrong in this side here with the float. So we're going to take it apart now, have a look and hopefully be able to get off the boat. We've temporarily parked our car in at Runaway Bay Shopping Centre and it's been there. Today will be day three so we really need to get across and move it and yeah, fix it all up from there. So fingers crossed we'll be able to pull this apart oh, and more importantly put it back together and uh, have a working tender again. All right, so um, what I've found is this thing's actually been fairly regularly serviced. So you can see there's a lot of wear on all the screws and things like that. And everything has been taken apart. And, um, but what we've got here is there's a, a needle and a seat in there. And it looks like the needle was all jammed up. I had to get some needle nose pliers in there to free it up. So I've freed it up now. I'll put the float back in, put it all back together. Fingers crossed <laughs> we will have an output again. We were looking on Marketplace and it's around about three grand for a second hand another one, the type that we want. So we're really hoping we'll be able to fix this up and uh, keep it running for a bit longer, but uh, well, we can't be stuck on the boat forever. So we'll see how we go. Well, great success. It looked like it was a needle and seat. Um, I don't know if you can see it here, we're down at the Gold Coast and there's a fair bit of current going by and there's, um, I jumped back in the tender with all my tools <laughs> and the carburetor in my hand and uh, I pulled the tender up and then as it slackened off it went back and it snatched and uh, a bit of muppetry on my part. I almost ended over the back of the tender and in the water with the carburetor tools, everything. So I fell right over the back and was hanging on to the sponsor. Uh, but we got it back together. It looks like it was a needle and seat and uh, we've got a tender again. So today is day three of the tender saga. Isn't it? I got it. Yeah. So yesterday Sam took it apart and it was running smoothly and then this morning turned it on first go, ran smoothly and then it died. Okay so we've come on into the Runaway Bay Pontoons to give you a bit of an update on the saga that is our outboard. Uh, we couldn't do the talk out on the mooring because it's too windy and a little bit too bumpy back there and uh, yeah folks that's where I've been trying to work on this thing so um, basically what's happened is we've uh, I close the breather every time uh, of a night time to make sure no water gets in the tank but we've checked there's no water in the fuel the fuel is good um, then we've gone through sometimes the connection on the top of the tank when it gets bumped uh, doesn't work correctly that's what happened with us on summer a lot so I've rechecked all the connections they're absolutely fine the fuel bowl works fine the inline filter is good um, then I went through and 
I, I've pulled the puller a lot. I've tried talking to it, tried calling it names. None of that seemed to work. And, uh, I checked this fitting. I went, and this is like a, another water separator come secondary fuel filter on the engine. We've got our primary here, which is our inline, uh, which I checked and it's good. The secondary here I took out, checked. There's been no water contamination. Then I disconnected the fuel line to the carburetor, just pumped the fuel bowl to make sure that everything was okay. The next thing I was gonna do was take the uh, spark plugs out of the back, uh, and I thought that potentially I might have flooded it. So I left it for a while, but usually you take the spark plugs out, pull it over a few times, and that's a way of not unflooding it anymore and checking the spark on them. But we didn't have the right size. Uh, spark plug ratchet so then I got my little friend here which is just contact cleaner because I didn't have some cold start and I sprayed it directly into the carburetor and it started firing straight away so that means that it wasn't flooded and that it's definitely a fuel problem so that's when I took the carburetor apart and I found that the the pin where the float is at the bowl of the carby was stuck up in the seat there. So I freed it all up, it was a little bit gunked up, cleaned through the whole carby, reinstalled it, put it back together, and then the next day, the outboard wouldn't go. So this time I've pulled the carby apart again, and all I've done is I've got a little bit of very fine sandpaper and I've wet sanded the needle, just to try and hopefully it won't stick up in there. I've brought my trusty starter fluid just in case. Uh, that is where we're at with the outboard. Woohoo! <laughs> First go. These are signs of it always to come. Oh no, 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 come on. Come on. There we go. We'll have to name it. It's got a bit of personality. We're like Sally, Sassy Sally. Okay, Sally it is. Oh, we don't want it. We want to name it an encouraging name. We don't want to name We don't want to encourage sassiness. <laughs> <laughs> carriage reliability. What's it reliable? Uh... Alrighty folks, we're super keen to end this saga that is our outboard. So if any of you guys could help us out by coming up with a good reliable name and put it in the comments below, it'd be greatly appreciated. So it is 12.45, almost 1am, and the wind is howling. So this is our first night on board shining light with wind like this like bad weather and um so we can like feel the anchor um jerking and everything so we're up just sort of watching the anchor um which is completely normal it's just a new boat we need to get used to her and um there's a dinging sound it's just stopped a bit we thought it was this LED strip up here. I thought it was this bit banging against the window. It's actually coming from the other side of the wall and it's the lures. But um, Sam's just gone out and hopefully we're calling back the lures so that they don't um, bang. <laughs> oh, Sam's just fixed it. So last night we thought the clanking on the walls was the fishing lures, which are down here. And so we thought the clinking was these guys. And um, upon further investigation, they actually can't be the ones that made any noise because they're so far away from the wall. They, um, they can't clink the wall to make that noise so the noise last night that we were hearing over and over again was um the seat cushions this seat cushion here so it's now jammed in the side so it can't move but um it's out like this and the noise was the wind picking it up and <laughs> doing that over and over and over again so um what sam's done is just moved it to the side over here and it's just 
we've just jammed it there and that was that was the easy fix so that was our mystery noise last night we are up early today to get started on the child netting so child netting for us is kind of like cleaning we both don't particularly love doing it but we love the results so we're up super duper early because fingers crossed we're going to try and get it done in two days so we're going to have our cuppers so we can get to it Take the blue one off. It's coming off. Fully loose. Beautiful. It should be floating up about now. They're both loose. Yeah. Oh, so it should just freely go. It should. Real tight. While putting on the child netting, we needed to get to the pole behind the dagger board. So we needed to put the dagger board down into the water, which is what we're finding difficult at this point because neither ropes will pull the dagger board up nor down. So that's causing us a bit of issue. So that is going to be another tackle for another day. Okay, so what we're doing here is joining two pieces of net together. Now, I like to be super efficient with money. And so, you know, some people who have known me for a long time might even call me a, a little bit of a tight ass. But um, what's happened is we managed to get some child netting uh, from the donation box in the boat works. And it was, in my opinion, the perfect price, which is free. But uh, unfortunately, it wasn't quite long enough to go all the way down the side of the boat. So what we have to do is join two bits of netting together. Now, the way this netting is, is it's joined actually in the weave itself, but most nets are all just a whole heap of single sheet bends. And if you were to sew this net from the beginning, you would start at the top and every little loop you would get, you would do a sheet bend, bring it through, do another sheet bend, bring it through to another sheet bend, bring it through to another sheet bend, and then do row after row after row. So now we're joining these two together and we're gonna use sheet bends to do it. So the way you do that is you end up with your end piece here, the end of one of your diamonds. You get your needle, you put it up through from the outside then what you want to do is get your length and you just want to keep them roughly uniformed all the way through once you have your length it's very important that you go from the bottom up through the other diamond and then thread it underneath and that will give you your sheet bend if you do it the other way the knot will be round the wrong way so always from the bottom up on through and then that's the sheet bend there and then pull it tight and away you go and you keep doing plenty of sheet bends all the way down until it's all sewed together so those are them there so we're sewing this net again it's because we got it for the right price and rather than having to go and buy another 30 meter length uh, which is considerably expensive we're able to get some from the donation bin we'll sew it together and it'll make our um, child daddy all right guys so we've finished the child netting basically what we've done is we've got some three mil bb cord half inch
reached it all the way across the top. Um, this here is the joint that I showed you earlier. It was uh, good to put my misspent youth on board the back deck of prawn trawlers to good use. And then we've got some 5mm BB cord there. So all the way along, it's all half hitches. Now, it took 320 metres of BB cord. We bought 30 metres of child netting. We also acquired some that was kindly donated into the donation bin at the Boatworks to make up the rest of the little bit. And around about 100 million half hitches to get it all done. And this here is the finished product. The biggest part that we were concerned of was at the front here, just if she's playing on the trampolines or anything like that, it would be quite easy to fall through. So we've got it all the way through. Thank you for watching. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button as they really help us out. And we will see you guys next week.